Thanks, Jim. Well, as Jim said, we're going to run through, similar to previous years, uh, the title there, Recent Enhancements, Future Developments and Industry Trends. I'm going to show you some of the stuff we've been doing over the last year or so, some things we've got planned for the future, that should be coming out next year, and just our sort of feeling for some of the trends that are going on in industry. Uh, a lot of it's just my personal opinion, so don't take it as gospel. All right, don't want anybody coming back next year and saying, you told us. Okay, so we'll get started. Uh, first of all, you know, great to see everybody again. We've got the old faces, we've got the new faces, we've got the not so new, not so old faces. So we really appreciate your continued support. It's great to see you. And again, TSI's efforts, just building year upon year what they're doing with our software products. Um, not just here in the States, we've got a couple of the Australian customers. We've doubled the number who've come since last year. So we've got two of them this year here. That's not the number of Aussie customers we've got, it's just the people who you know, took the long flight over here. Uh, other area as well, we've got Sam, um, new TSI sales guy for the Gulf States Middle East region based out of Dubai, he's over here as well. So it's further expansion for TSI and for MAP as well working together. Okay, we'll go through. So what have we done really? Um, there's lots of new patterns gone in there. There's lots of new features. There's feature enhancements. I'm going to show you something on the cam side on the double wall in a second just to emphasize that. Lots and lots of pattern changes. You know, loads more. We've added double wall too. We've put damper holes in lots more fittings. The add hole function's gone in lots more fittings. On the, the data and print object side, again, we're just continuously expanding what information you can get out to build that, that link, that integration with whether it's your accounting software or something like that. Uh, on the CAD side, numerous text improvements have gone in, which there's classes running on a lot of these things throughout the three-day period. Okay? So I didn't want to spend too much time on them. So really what I'm sort of projecting is that the last year is rather than big, big changes. It's kind of been a, a year of consolidation rather than evolution, revolution. So, so we're making lots of small changes in there, improving things steadily for you. Part of the reason for that, if you think back to last year, we put in a lot of big stuff. There's a lot of big bang changes in. Um, talking to some people last night, I was just hearing, it's good to hear how people have been actually deploying and implementing that throughout the last year, actually, up to this date. And I say we've got lots of little new tools coming through, which we'll show you. So I just wanted to look over some of the, the future developments that we've got coming through. And again, this does touch back to some of the stuff we did last year. If you remember, we brought up a couple of slides last year on what we would call interoperability. Okay. Um, one thing was about IFCs, industry foundation classes. And another area was uh, to do with Revit. So we'll be coming on to the Revit shortly. The IFCs, um, if you remember, again, it related to sort of Revit in some ways. We needed to create an IFC file right, to pass the, the, the graphical information into other applications. Uh, now, there's quite a few players, there's quite a few um, organizations involved in this. Build Smart, you'll have heard of, okay? Uh, but there's a realization growing that in the current form, IFCs probably cannot handle all the data that we need. We get the graphics model, fine, okay? If you want to clash detect against it, just visualize it, fine. But if you want to pass some of your intelligence, pass some of your data over. So there's been quite a bit of dialogue behind the scenes between some of the vendors. Uh, I mean, we've been talking with X-Steel, who, sorry, Tecla, who produce X-Steel for the steelwork industry. Uh, we were also discussing with um, a company called Celebri, based out of Finland and the States, who have an IFC viewing and sort of checking rules-based system as well. And there's a general feeling here that probably the IFC format's going to have to evolve into something else. Uh, one of the ideas is we'll keep the graphical information, but then dependent on the application, we'll have global data properties. So that might just be describing the system that you know a piece of pipe part of. Um, you know, if it's chilled water, hot water, etc., the zonal information or section information where it is in the building. But then there'll be a separate set of data attributes which are particular to a specific application. So that's where we come in with our type of stuff. We'll have all the fabrication information, all the price information in there that's not necessarily going to need to you know, uh, move around between different applications. 
So I say that's just keeping you abreast of sort of some of the things um, that's happening on the IFC front. And the next one, okay, is onto the interoperability with Revit. So last year we looked at a couple of slides. Uh, we called them the Revit Awareness Plan. And I think just before last year's event, Andy and before. Jim, yeah, they'd been to what was the first Revit developer camp in Boston with Autodesk. And okay, we went, we sort of got a bit of exposure, but to be honest, we were still fairly naive about what was going on. Um, so it raised the question then, you know, okay, what's going to happen? We need to increase our awareness. So what's happened is that awareness plan has kind of evolved. The Revit awareness plan has morphed into the Revit action plan. All right, cling to the edge of your seats now. It's a white knuckle ride. We're off and running. So what action have we taken? Well, we, the developers like Andy and some of our colleagues sort of took a look and the application programming interface, the API for Revit, uses .NET, okay? The possibilities then, what, what are they that's available to us? You know, everybody's asking, running on Revit, that's gotta be one of the possibilities. Well, as a result of the work that the developer's been doing, um, it's pretty apparent that the API, the programming interface for Revit, at this time, it's just not given enough tools, not functionality, it's not robust enough for us to consider running CADduct on top of Revit. That's just fact, and it's gonna be, it may be possible in the future, but if it is, that is a long way down the road, okay? Now, we're not saying we won't be able to run some form of application on top of Revit, okay? That can facilitate integrating with our existing applications. And we'll see something else on that quite soon, actually. So the second possibility that we're considering is just working with Revit files. But again, what do we mean by that? Well, to the CAD department or contractors, that might mean taking a Revit MEP engineering model, okay, and then taking that forward to drive the coordination process, the fabrication process. But what about in estimating? Well, again, it could be that the estimators want to take that design or engineering model, okay, bring it through, populate it with CAD.CAD MEC objects to get your pricing information. So where do we stand? Okay, this is where we stand. So we're gonna look at now at the conversion of a Reddit model into MAP software. Bearing in mind, we started this about a month ago. So this is a video that Andy and I created uh, just the other day. It shows in Revit MEP 2009, quite a small model of some structures, some basic HVAC services. So what we're doing here is selecting those and then going up using a application that we've added transfer to map software. So that's a program we've put running on top of Revit. It's gonna come up and ask us for a file prompt going to save that away and then the next step is going to be to transfer back across into our own software. So we're now looking at this inside the, the cam stroke estimating package. Many of you be familiar, we're in the 3D viewer and we're using the import underlay function, same as you do for a DWIF or a PDF. All right, we've brought in that file, there's the Revit model transferred and if we just hide a few things we can see that we've got the duct services ported across as well. Uh, we're just gonna take a view from a couple of other positions here. Now, I wasn't brave enough to try it live, but i say that was recorded by me and Andy to Monday. All right, showing you taking Revit 2009 model out and into directly our software. So, what can we do with it? I'm sure some of you are dying to ask, you know, is that actually converted into true CAD duct, CAD mech objects? Well, I'm honest, so I'm gonna to have to say no, it's not at the moment, but that's gonna be the next progression we've got to look now. Now we've got that far, see how far we can go. So as well as bringing the geometry over, you gotta remember there is obviously for, for clash detection, etc. that's bringing, it's ported in. All right, we're ready to roll with that. 